Gopi Chanda Valava Giri Vardhani Jai Gopi Chanda Valava Giri Vardhani Jasudana Nana Braja Janaranjana Jasudana Nana Braja Janaranjana Jamu Nati Ravana Jamunati Ravana Chadi Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Srimadhi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Bacchani Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatjari Shatarine Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Forty-two. Reading from Shrimad Bhagavatam, third canto, chapter twenty, text number forty-two. Now forty-two just has a sh one line, so we're going to move on to a forty-three altogether. I'll do forty-two, and then we'll do forty-three together. Urjasvantam manyamana. Atmanam Bhagavan Oja Sadyam Ganan Pitriganan Pari Parokshena Srijat Prabhu Translation Recognizing himself to be full of desire and energy, the worshipful Brahma, the creator of the living entities, evolved from his own invisible form, from his navel the hosts of sadhyas and pitas. Report. The sadhyas and pitas are invisible forms of departed souls, and they are also created by Brahma. Text number 43, please repeat. Sa'atma sargam tam kayam Ta'atma sargam tam kayam Pitarak prati pedire Pitarak prati pedire Sadi bhascha pedri bhascha Sadi bhascha pedri bhascha Kavayo yarvitan bate Kavayo yadvitan vate Saatma sargam tankayam Petarak prati pedire Sadye bhyascha prati bhyascha Kavayo yadvitan vate Please repeat. 
स आत्मसर्गम तम गायम The Atma Sargam Tankayam Vitarak Pratipe Dire Sadhyavyascha Pratibhyascha Kabayoya Ritangate Atmasargam Tangayam Vitarak Pratipe Dire Sadhi Vyascha Pratibhyascha Kavayo Yaritan Vate Atmasargam Tangayam Vitarak Pratipe Dire Sadhi Vyascha Pratibhyascha Kavyo Yaritan Vate Ladies Sa Atma Sargam Tankayam Isirata Vite Vire Kavya Pratibhyascha Kavyo Yaritan Vate Day, day, Atma Sargam, source of their existence. Tam, that, Kayam, body. Pitara, the pitas. Atipe, the day, accepted. Sadhya, to the sadhyas. Cha, and. Patribhya, Patribhya, to the pittas, cha, also, kabaya, those well versed in rituals, yat, through which, vitan vata vate, sorry, excuse me, vitan vate, offer oblations. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Silesi Bhakti Vranta Prabhupada Ki Jai. The Pitas themselves took pos possession of the invisible body, the source of their existence. It is through the medium of this invisible body that those well that those well versed in the rituals offer oblations to the sadhyas and Pitas in the form of their departed ancestors on the occasion of Shraddha. Purport. Shraddha is a ritualistic performance observed by the followers of the Vedas. There is a yearly occasion of 15 days when ritualistic religionists follow the principle of offering oblations to departed souls. <coughs> Thus, those fathers and ancestors who, by freaks of nature, might not have a gross body for material enjoyment, can again gain such bodies due to the offering of Shraddha oblations by their descendants. The performance of Shraddha or offering oblations with Prasad is still current in India, especially in Gaya, where oblations are offered at the lotus feet of Vishnu in a celebrated temple. Because the Lord is thus pleased with the, the devotional service of the descendants, by His grace He liberates the con condemned souls of forefathers who do not have gross bodies. And He favors them again to receive a gross body for development of spiritual advancement. 
Unfortunately, by the influence of Maya, the conditioned soul employs the body he gets for sense gratification, forgetting that such an occupation may lead him to return to an invisible body. The devotee of the Lord is one who is in Krishna consciousness, or one who is in Krishna consciousness, however, does not need to perform such ritualistic ceremonies as Shraddha, because he is always pleasing the Supreme Lord. Therefore, his fathers and, ancestor, and, ans and ancestors who might have been in difficulty are automatically relieved. The vivid example is Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj requested Lord Narasimhadev to deliver his sinful father, who had so many times offended the lotus feet of the Lord. The Lord replied that in a family where a Vaishnava like Prahlad is born, not only his father, but his father's father and their fathers, up to the 14th father back, are all automatically delivered. The conclusion, therefore, is that Krishna consciousness is the sum total of all good work for the family, for society, and for all living entities. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, the author says that a person fully conversant with Krishna consciousness <clears throat> does not perform any rituals because he knows that simply by serving Krishna in full Krishna consciousness, all rituals are automatically performed. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshuna Mitam Jena Tazmai Sigur Vinam Kam Guru Divao Chalam Pangam Lungai Degim Yadgi Padama Dei Sigur Vinam Tarnam Ramananda Marvam Si Chaitanya Ishwaram So here Prabhupada, wow, what a purport. He makes it very clear that simply by Krishna we don't have to do anything else. We don't have to strive for other goals or entertain any other uh, fantasies like we typically see in the material world. People are engaged in so many fan uh, would it be fanciful fanciful ideas how to enjoy life or advance etc. But none of that is necessary for one who engages in the process of Krishna consciousness. We've been reading here how Lord Brahma is engaged in the process of creation in a conversation between Maitreya and Vidura. They're explaining how Lord Brahma <coughs> was um, able to create so many living beings, but we have to understand uh, that all of this was given to Brahma within the heart. It's not that all of a sudden Brahma was qualified to create all such living beings, but it was by the Lord's grace, the Lord within his heart. And this, throughout this whole purport, Prabhupada makes the point is that by the Lord's grace that uh, anything is uh, uh, accomplished. Uh, sometimes the living being forgets that as Prabhupada makes the point here in the purport, but it's by the grace of the Supreme Lord within the heart. Paramatmeti chap yukto deismin purusatpara, Krishna is in the heart, and he's giving, he's overseeing everything, but he's also guiding. It's not that we're, it's like a, a ship without a rudder. You get out into the ocean, if you've ever been out into the ocean, and if you uh, turn the motor off, all of a sudden the boat goes in all sorts of directions. But if that uh, rudder is working by the uh, strength of that motor, then uh, things uh, are very smooth. There's an interesting um, question that was uh, offered to Srila Bhakti Siddhanta that uh, you're a uh, uh, Paribhajaka Charja, you're, you're out there preaching, traveling and preaching. How is it that you've taken shelter of some Bhajananandi, such as Gorkishore as Babaji Maharaj? And Srila Bhakti Sanatha Maharaj replied that um, the boat is there, but 
the motor, although it may not be evident, although it may be even silent, uh, it's because of that motor that that boat is able to glide uh, successfully. So although I may be out preaching, it's by the strength uh, and guidance, uh, the energy of my Guru Maharaj, Srila Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj, that I'm able to accomplish anything. So uh, we have to understand that it's by the Lord's grace that um, Lord Brahma was able to create such in incredible uh, uh, feats, such incredible beings. Here Srila Prabhupada points out that uh, the Shraddha is a ritualistic performance <coughs> excuse me, observed by the followers of the Vedas. And uh, this Shraddha ceremony is a um, common activity amongst uh, the followers of uh, uh, Vedic ritual, ritualistic practices. It's very common. And Prabhupada points out here that you can go to such places as Gaya. You can also go to places like Haridwar or Allahabad. Uh, in Haridwar, uh, they have uh, this uh, beautiful ghat. It's called Brahma Ghat. And um, you can go to the bank there and you'll find all sorts of people. Um, there are many, many uh, Brahmins and they, mm, they remind you that uh, if you're coming here to Haridwar, then you, you have to offer some kind of uh, sacrifice. You have, to be, you have to perform something. Even you take bath and then afterwards you have to give some dakshin. Um, so, um, you can go to the bank there and there's many uh, Brahmins and um, priests and they look for, look in the crowd, there's someone coming here, oh, okay, there's a good one. And uh, just like I went there one time, oh, he's a good one. <laughs> so, so they got me. But I had a purpose. I had to offer some um, ashes of a uh, departed relative. And so the Brahmin, he sits you down <coughs> and he's, he's uh, uh, initially he's uh, there by himself. But as soon as you sit down, he has three or four assistants. And everybody's there uh, reminding you how important it is and what a special thing this is that you're offering some kind of shraddha for a relative. And um, so they're very um, formal. Everything is very paka. You sit down and you sit in a certain direction even and uh, you perform achman and you uh, have to, uh, you know, there's garlands and uh, so much paraphernalia, uh, paraphernalia is there. And it's interesting because there's, it's all along the bank. It's not just one or two places, <laughs> but, but it's all along the bank. You'll find these little, um, I guess you could say asanas set up for the uh, yagyas and then uh, you begin the uh, service and uh, this engagement uh, we understand is uh, from the Guru to Purana is performed some 13 days after the departed soul has left. There's a, a 15 day lunar period there and um, the uh, purpose behind it is that 
there's a certain number of days after the passing that this ceremony has to be performed. And there's a certain time period there. Uh, Rabindranath Prabhu knows better than I. But uh, there's a certain time period that has, that uh, during this uh, lunar period, that the Shraddha ceremony is performed. And different things are uh, offered, right? There's a pinda, which is the rice, milk, and ghee, and sugar mixture. And uh, those balls are there, and they're made uh, specifically for that. Uh, then there's uh, uh, tarpan, which is the uh, water mixed with uh, black sesame and and kusha, so it's uh, so there's something to eat and drink, and the purpose of it is that uh, during that time period between uh, the passing and getting to the court of Yamaraj, the living being has to travel. There's a certain time period. There's a certain number of days it takes to get to the to uh, Yamapuri, to the uh, residence or the uh, uh, city of Yamaraj. And then it's another 11, 12 months that the living being has to travel to get to the court of Yamaraj. So, right? So there's a time period. And it's understood that offering this pinda and... Uh, 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 tarpan, there's something for the living being to eat and drink before you get to the court of Yamaraj. Be ready. When you get to the court of Yamaraj, it's a whole different story. Uh, but uh, those things are uh, performed. These, <coughs> these rituals are performed. Ultimately, of course, we understand it's, it's meant to help the living entity advance. It's not, uh, it's not just to uh, take on another material body and uh, as Prabhupada explains here in the purport that by the grace of the Lord those offerings the living being is given a chance uh, so it's not just to uh, get another body so that we can again enjoy but it's meant to advance sometimes that body may be subtle so that you go to Pitri Loka where there are subtle beings they have more subtler forms but they're material so uh, again uh, you sit down with the uh, priest he begins his uh, mantras, he begin, he's chanting all, quaint, all kinds of mantras, you'd never know where they're from, but uh, it's, it sounds in, uh, very um, fascinating or I don't know what the word would be, attractive or curious just to hear how uh, they're doing all these wonderful shlokas. So, uh, and then at some point, um, uh, during the service, uh, the after the uh, 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 pinda and a tarpan is offered, uh, the dakshin has to come into the picture, and that's that's the process. Uh, dakshin has to be given to uh, uh, different uh, living beings. Uh, and asking, of course, for their uh, blessings. Some charity has to be given. So, uh, first of all, the charity is given to the cows. So, the priest, uh, priest asks you, uh, how much do you want to give? How much dakshin you want to give for the cows? Okay, well, okay, well how many cows? Because not just one cow, you want to give to a lot of cows, uh, and then and then you give some dakshin to the brahmanas, okay. But how many brahmanas? <laughs> so you, you know where this is headed. First is how many cows, or cows, a cow, how many cows, a brahman, how many brahmans. And then you can offer to the different devas. Well, how many devas? Well, then you offer to the sadhus. Well, how many sadhus? And then you have to offer to the poor. Well, how many poor? So, by the, you started off with, say, 
a thousand rupee uh, uh, service, whatever it is nowadays, I think it's somewhere around that. And before you know it, it's 10,000 by the time you leave. Um, but uh, again, these are all ritualistic uh, engagements, which uh, as Prabhupada points out in this uh, purport, it's meant to help those uh, departed souls. But the real purpose of it uh, is that they uh, make uh, advancement. It's not that we're just simply interested in uh, ritualistic ceremonies because there's no need for that for the devotees. We don't have any obligation uh, to the uh, demigods or to the sages or uh, ordinary living. Of course, we have some obligation to them because the devas are giving us so many things, right? The demigods are offering us so many things. The sages uh, are giving us uh, so many things, knowledge, etc. Example, ordinary living beings are uh, servicing us every day. The bus driver, the guy who's uh, delivering uh, this thing or that thing, ordinary living beings are offering us so many uh, items. Relatives are giving us so many things. Right during Christmas, everybody's getting presents, and then the next day, everybody returns them. But still, uh, the relatives are giving something, and then uh, you're, you're obliged to them, and so many uh, friends. Uh, so, uh, all of these things are what to speak of the forefathers. The forefathers, Pitris, the, they're all, they've given us so many things. So, this purpose of this uh, Shraddha ceremony, uh, it's observed by those who are following the ritualistic uh, processes uh, which are uh, delineated in the Vedic literatures. But for the devotees, uh, we're not obliged to those things. And uh, as a result, uh, or understanding that, um, even if the opportunity is uh, offered just as a Prahlad, Prabhupada gives the example of Prahlad here, really nice, uh, how uh, uh, when Lord Nishingadev uh, killed Hiranyakashipu, he asked uh, Prahlad, well, what is it? Okay, now what do you want? And Prahlad's answer was what? Yadi dasyasi me kaman vanangstang varadar shapa kaman amadhi dasyam rovam bhavatas tu varanevaram He didn't want anything. I don't want uh, anything. This is not some uh, business arrangement, just like uh, typically people uh, or in the material world, uh, the uh, relationship between this and that, this person, that person, it's a business arrangement. Well, what are you going to do for me? Uh, well, I'll do this if you do that. I'll vote for you and then I'll give you this. Uh, right? Or I will I love you if you do this. So it's not that kind of a um, arrangement between the devotee and the Lord. It's not a business arrangement. So Prahlad was saying, no, I don't want anything. If anything, O oh, best of the giver of benedictions, then, then I pray that within the core of my heart, Bhavadas tu varanevaram, that within the heart, within the core of my heart, there be no material desires. That is what the devotees are. Uh, attracted to. That's what they're uh, focused on. That if Krishna is kind enough to give us something, it's not that we're using it for sense gratification, whether it be this body or ma other material things, but instead we're looking that how can I engage it in Krishna's service so that I can make some advancement. So, um, as Prabhupada points out here, that unfortunately, by the influence of Maya, because uh, the living being has been uh, stuck in this material world uh, and due to a bad association, right? Purushak Prakritisto, because he's uh, been uh, unfortunately put into a very a compromised. Uh, situation and by that 
compromised situation, that bad association takes effect and the living entity, be, and the living entity forgets. As Prabhupada points out here from the Chaitanya Charitamrita is described, Krishna Bhuli Se Jeev Anadi Bhairmuk, right? The living being uh, is uh, forgetting Krishna because of his forgetfulness. He becomes attracted by the external energy. And therefore, Maya gives him all kinds of uh, suffering. Again, he has to take on a material body. Uh, Prabhupada made a really nice point. Um, um, but the point is that uh, because of his forgetfulness, uh, he doesn't understand what is uh, 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 what to do uh, and what is uh, in his best interests. Uh, therefore, uh, the process of Krishna consciousness, as Prabhupada points out here, is so important. And uh, that it supersedes any other activities or rituals or work that one may do for oneself or for others. It, it, it supersedes all of these things, right? Kali Kali Aranai Kona Dharma. The, the, uh, the, uh, the activities of Krishna consciousness uh, are the highest. Those are the uh, what, Vaishnava, Vaishnava, Shastra, Eshastra, uh, There's nothing uh, that is more important than the Vedic uh, or the Vaishnav uh, principles. And uh, uh, these other works that, uh, that are promoted daily, uh, they uh, are not helpful. They're not helping the conditioned souls. And uh, instead, uh, they're, again, putting themselves in a very uh, compromised uh, position. There's a very nice instruction given by Yamaraj when he's speaking to the, his uh, dhutas, his servants. He says, Etavan eva loke smin punksha dharma paraksmrita. Right? He says that devotional service or this process of Krishna consciousness, which is um, uh, condensed in that chanting of the holy name, is the ultimate principle. It's the ultimate principle for the living entity in human society. And, uh, but all others uh, it, it, not just human society, as Prabhupada points out here, but all living beings are automatically benefited. It's not that uh, uh, when we practice uh, some the general activities of Krishna consciousness that we're only just benefiting human society. We're benefiting all living beings. So it's the highest, it's just like watering the root of a tree. You can do so many things uh, on, the tr on the plant, but once you water the root of that plant, it it, it flourishes. <coughs> so uh, the activities of Krishna consciousness are so uh, so far above any any the uh, ritualistic performances or recommendations in this Purana or that Purana or whatever. Uh, it's it's they're so far beyond it. It's the most auspicious activity. Uh, Shukadev Goswami tells Maharaj Prickett, right? Right? Tasmat Sankirtanam Dishnor, Jagan Mangalam. Anghasam, he tells Maharaj Brikit that uh, the uh, activities of Krishna consciousness are so auspicious, they're the most auspicious thing uh, in the universe. So try to understand it so that others will take it seriously. Which is, a very, which is very instructive that uh, uh, Brikit Maharaj, by his example, he showed he was so serious about understanding uh, what 
uh, his spiritual master was giving him, that he uh, was liberated. He set such a wonderful example because he was so serious about understanding what his spiritual master was telling him. And the, so the example, the understanding is that uh, by taking this process of Krishna consciousness seriously, not only are we benefiting ourselves, but we're benefiting so many others. By his example, so many others are benefited. So by our example, whether it be out preaching or whether it's servicing the deities in a beautiful way and making so many wonderful offerings to them, that example is really, really, uh, it's the highest thing in the universe that you can do. That activity of uh, bhakti yoga uh, is the highest thing that you can do. Uh, these other activities are not important. As Prabhupada points out here, uh, the author says that a person fully conversant with Krishna consciousness does not perform any rituals because he knows that simply by serving Krishna in full Krishna consciousness, all rituals are automatically performed. So it, uh, it's a matter of becoming, as uh, Shukadeva Goswami tells Mar Maharaj Prickett, it's a matter of uh, taking it uh, seriously. So uh, these, uh, these descriptions and, and uh, um, explanations that, are, uh, that we're reading here in uh, the Bhagavatam, although uh, sometimes they seem a little bit uh, uh, no purposeful, they're uh, purposeless. What would the word be? Uh, but no, actually not. Everything that we see in the Bhagavatam has a purpose and has a direction to it. And we can understand, uh, as Prabhupada is explaining so nicely in his purports, that uh, the process of uh, bhakti yoga and Krishna consciousness, especially the chanting of the holy name. Uh, is uh, the highest activity that one can perform. And uh, it should be not be done for uh, gain or profit. We don't, in, uh, again, we don't, uh, we're not interested in some gain, we're not interested in any profit, neither uh, is the devotee uh, fearful. Right? Tadgiriya uh, the uh, Prahlad Maharaj explains that uh, he's not uh, fearful uh, in this material world. His only anxiety was that Maya Sukaya Paramudva Tobi Mudhan, the Mudhas, the foolish persons, are making so many useless plans for sense gratification. So, some or other, uh, we also have to uh, take it seriously so that we can benefit ourselves and all others. Well, in there. Are there any questions or comments? Hi, Maharaj. Uh, I also want to thank you for this wonderful class, uh, especially the last 15 minutes of it cannot be emphasized enough. In fact, I thought you were going to forget that. <laughs> and I was going to have something to say, but I don't. You said it all beautifully. And thanks so much. The point that, he, that uh, Nakatma Prabhu is making, and that the Prabhupada makes it right in the purport, is that the Shraddha ceremony is not necessary for devotees. And that is because they're performing the devotional activities, as you just mentioned, those chanting of the holy name, that has so much spiritual potency in it that whatever benefit that one would get from the Shraddha ceremony is being gotten by the general way of life of a person who is trying to be a pure devotee. And therefore that spiritual activity which is coming out through uh, his chanting of the holy name, that, that takes care of all benefits, all blessings, blessings uh, for that uh, particular individual. He doesn't have to be doing these. It says he doesn't have to be doing these rituals and ceremony. That's for people who are not devotees. So there, there's a difference. <laughs> and uh, I think Naikatma Prabhu, he pointed out <clears throat> that there is a difference. He mentioned all the things that devotees do. 
and non-devotees don't do them, and therefore they have to do these different ritualistic activities. Such Tanoi Prabhu. It has been, uh, this is a question. It has been, uh, I've been observing also, and probably many of you seen this. We've seen this, that there are many, we say, devotees who still depend on many other things, uh, like rituals. For example, you know, there, are, there was one devotee who was one time giving a class, he says, what is the need of getting all this, you know, when you go to see an astrologer and they prescribe you, they tell you, you should wear a ring that is, goes along with your planet, and then you get certain, uh, go to India, and you know, many Brahmins, they tell you, you, if you get this amulet or this extra help will be good for you, and there are devotees, many of them, them, and so on, there are so many things. So my question is, uh, you know, Prahlad Maharaj, of course, is a very pure devotee, Paramahansa, and many other ones, so therefore, there's no need for you. So is that, so the question is, for devotees who are not in that level, is it because they don't have enough faith and they just want to go, maybe if I do this extra thing, you know, there's a doubt. What, if, what about if it doesn't work? I'm not that pure. Because the benefit's still there for many other people out there, you know, those rituals. There is some benefit, otherwise you wouldn't be there. So did I name my... Yeah, it's, it, it's material desires. There's still some karma, gyan, yoga, uh, material purpose. And, and yeah, I was so even... That's, that's, you know, it, you know it, there's uh, mixed, uh, there's different levels of bhakti. There's mixed devotional service. Uh, the different bhakti processes or levels of bhakti, different uh, types of mixed bhakti are described in nectar devotion. But uh, the potency of practicing bhakti yoga is such that uh, eventually, if it's practiced sincerely, those material desires will diminish. Uh, there won't be, uh, okay, I'm, not, I'm tired of just um, performing rituals uh, to get some or follow the, my astrological chart because of this and maybe I'll have something uh, at this such and such time or let me just uh, practice something to stay healthy but, but you're going to die anyway. Uh, so um, eventually uh, the practice of bhakti is so powerful that um, those material uh, motives, uh, they'll diminish. It, it just takes time. Uh, we're, we're coming from uh, some very bad places and some or other we're here and now we have a chance to remedy that situation get out of that nightmare of material life but it takes time there is another observation i was just thinking also with all respects of course our Srila Prabhupada, for example in thursdays he will not travel or he will do something that it, appear, it, it appears to be like for us like ritual he's a pure devotee somebody can say you don't have to do this because you're you know krishna will protect you and of course, we cannot understand the activities of the pure devotee. But <laughs> is there anything you could, anything you could say about that? Why? Because it falls in the same topic of you know. Yeah. Again, you know, the devotee is because of his surrender to Krishna. He's under Krishna's protection. Daivam prakritim ashrita. So uh, it may it may uh, in. In, uh, in our limited understanding or vision appear that, well, he's, Prabhupada had his Bhrigu reading done also. Does that mean that Prabhupada was uh, interested in astrology? Yeah. No, it was okay. He, he, when, he heard, he, when he heard the uh, statement of Bhrigu, he stood up and he chanted Haribo. 
when Bhrigu uh, in his uh, fall uh, describes that Srila Prabhupada is to go to the West and become very successful in his preaching. Okay, but that was, he already understood that because he's following the order of his guru and depending on Krishna that whatever happens, uh, uh, I'm, I'm simply uh, uh, following the instruction and taking shelter of the uh, spiritual master. And so, uh, in the same way, we, you know, successful or not, or uh, young, old, you know, healthy, sick, whatever our condition may be, if we just simply uh, take shelter of the uh, process, uh, the uh, spiritual master and he take shelter of his lotus feet then uh, all success is there uh, if it's meant to be but we can't get too bent out of shape about um, looking for material things or looking for material results or or making some judgment of uh, what a uh, what a uh, Paramahansa is doing. We can't make that uh, judgment. Uh, Gorky Shore does Babaji Maharaj. He was uh, living in a latrine. Uh, so, do we make a judgment of that? This is what the Paramahansas do? No, no. That's just uh, that's lack. Of, that's ignorance to see it that way. We have to understand that Krishna is always guiding uh, the. Uh, surrendered souls and whatever they're doing is is meant for an example as in the case of Prikit Maharaj uh, or it's meant to uh, teach us we had some more comments Hare Krishna Guru, thank you for the wonderful presentation um, yes it's in regard your uh, observation uh, in the seventh canto of the Bhagavadam, in the Sarata Darshan, and the commentary of Vishwanath Chakravarti, uh, more especially in the ninth chapter in the prayers of Prahlad Maharaj, um, Vishwanath Chakravarti Tagur explained that sometimes pure devotees, they do those ritualistic activities just to set an example in the society and to raise uh, the conditions all to the platform of Vedic sacrifices. Because especially in Kali Yuga, people, especially in Kali Yuga, People are like Ugrayate, they are you know, born in a family of Asuras and they don't have the proper standards of sacrifices. So sometimes Paramahansas, they act in that way just to set an example so that people can take um, to the Vedic process. But the, whatever materialistic activity that they do, it doesn't give any uh, result, any karmic reaction. Uh, and then he quotes a verse from the 17th chapter of Bhagavad Gita when Krishna says that sacrifice which, which is performed uh, without faith, it doesn't give any result. So sometimes with Prabhupada may do those things or you know any other great devotee, but it's, first of all, doesn't give any result because they don't have faith in those karma kanda process. They only have faith in Krishna. We're different because we have no faith in Krishna. Therefore, we have to do so many other things, like seeing the astrological or seeing these or you know some people like big time absorbing Ayurveda. Anyway, as Prabhu said, they will die but they get so absorbing Ayurveda or yoga or some, uh, you know, I know the devotee, for example, that he spends like two hours daily doing pranayamas. Come on, bro, just chant the holy name, you know. So, yeah, because we don't have the proper faith. But the Paramahansas, they, as you s nicely say, no one can understand the mind, you know, the activities of the Vaishnavas. But yeah, Vishnu Chakravarti says that in Seven Canto. Yeah, thanks, Prabhupada so also like, comments that uh, 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 Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Krishna himself, they took spiritual master. But how are we to make a judgment of that? It, no, it's the example that needs to be understood. Now, that was a nice point Jerry, that you just made. And uh, uh, Prabhupada goes on in one of his purports uh, is to say that there are some people uh, who do not have any faith in the activities of devotional service. Uh, they say, no, this is just this, and this is that, and I, I don't believe in this and that. So these different ceremonies have been, have been um, uh, originated by the Lord himself for those kinds of people, and they do these different ceremonies, and in the course of doing these ceremonies, 
they slowly but surely become purified. And in the purificational process, they eventually come to the point where, well, maybe this holy name has some sense. Maybe it does, maybe it has value. Uh, let me at least give, but before they had no faith whatsoever and it was just a bunch of activities meaning nothing. So this is a very nice point that, that it was making uh, as that sometimes it takes a while before you come to the point where you can actually say Hare Krishna and you actually feel some joy, some happiness, some truth, some faith, and some, uh, uh, and, and some fulfillment out of that. That's right. Jai, Hare Krishna. Jai. 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 Jai.